Hello everyone. Today, we're going to see how to create a 3D rotation icon effect using an image sequence and the data binding solos property. So here, my file, I have already imported the image sequence. In this case, I use a PSD file that contains all the image. Since this file already has the dimensions I want for the icon, I just need to generate an adware from the file. In the hierarchy, you can see that we have a group with all the images inside. What I'm going to do to be able to visualize one of them at a time is use a solo object. And because the images are already grouped, I'm going to convert this group to a solo. Now we can toggle the visibility of the images using the ready button. Okay, let's see how to play the image sequence. What we used to do before was, in a timeline, create a key for each image. This works, but the problem is that we generate a large number of keys that will affect the final file size. What we're going to do instead is use data binding and only create a few keys. So for this, I'm going to create a view model. I'm going to call icon. And I'm going to add it to that bar. I'm also going to add a number property. I'm going to call num solo to control the solo object. Once we have this in the hierarchy, I'm going to select the solo objects and in the inspector bind the image value of the solo to the number property we create. So when we play the machine using this property, we can change the image of the solo object. Now that we have this property, the idea is to be able to control this from the timeline. And for this, we're going to use another number of property, but in this case, using a property group. I'm going to call this property timeline solo. And what I'm going to do is bind this new property to the num solo property we have in the view model. But in this case, using the option target to source, that means this property will control the value of the num solo that control the solo object. Now we can work on the timeline. The first thing is to create an animation for the idle state. Edge is going to create a key with the value zero for this property. The next animation is hover. In this, I'm going to create a key with the value zero here. And at the end of the timeline, a new key with the value 60, which is the last image of the solo object. The next thing is to configure the state machine. For this, I'm going to drag the hover animation and connect to the idle using two transitions. The condition I'm going to use here is a boolean. So I'm going to create a new property, boolean type, I'm going to call is hover. And use here. For the transition to hover, the boolean needs to be true. And for the transition to idle, the boolean needs to be false. 
and to be able to interact directly with the icon, I'm going to add a listener. In this case, I'm going to use a simple square as a hitbox. With the square selected, I'm going to add a new listener. And when the cursor enters, its hover is true. And another listener, when the cursor exits, its hover is false. And that's it. Now, if we play the machine, every time we hover on the icon, the animation plays. Now, let's do a few things to finish the icon. As you can see here, the animation stops each time we move the cursor out of the icon. To solve this, in the back transition, I'm going to check exit time and add 100%. This way the animation finishes before go back to the idle. To change the scale of hover, in this case, it's better to use another layer. This way, the interpolation won't affect the image sequence. So, I want to create two animations more. One for the idle scale. And another for the hover scale. Also, I'm going to group the solo object and the hitbox to use this new group for the scale. So, idle scale can be 70% and for the hover scale, 100%. Now, in this machine, I'm going to create a new layer and add these two animations with transitions using the same input. And for the transitions, in this case, something simple. 500 milliseconds for duration and a cubic curve. And that's it. Here is the icon working with uh, image sequence, a solar object, and data binding.